everybody. My name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Low Mode. And today on Hot Low Mode, we are getting into another super wealthy person's closet tour react videos. Now, I really enjoy these videos. I do think it's really, really interesting to go into the closets of people who have a lot of money and spend it on luxury items. I think it gives us a good look into how people actually spend their money, what they spend it on, the brands that they spend it on, and sort of how they form a loyalty to these brands as well. So today we are not looking at another Crazy Rich Asians wardrobe, although I'm sure we will get back into that very, very soon. But we're gonna be looking at the wardrobe of Huda Katan. For those of you who do not know, Huda Katan is a beauty influencer and entrepreneur. In 2013, she started her company called Huda Beauty, which has sort of taken over the makeup world. So before we can get started though, I do wanna say, if you guys are looking for a channel that talks about fashion in the most fun, sassy, bitchy, analytical way, this is it. You can go down below, hit the subscribe button and turn on my post notifications. I mean, like what do you have to lose? You're already here. And if you guys wanna see more from me, you can follow me on any of my social medias linked down below. And you can listen to the Fashion Victims Podcast, a podcast that I do with my friend Darnell Jamal, where we talk about the fashion news and gossip you need to know. Find that in the description box as well. So let's let's get to reacting, I'm excited. Getting into the world of Huda Beauty with the video titled, Welcome to My Closet. Okay, so far, not super duper mad at what I'm seeing. Some Chanel, some Vuitton, you know. Uh, a lotted coco bag, which I'm sure we'll see later, but like that's an iconic Chanel bag, which I think is from the fall winter 2014 like grocery store collection. And many of you should know that that's my favorite collection. So you guys asked for a house tour. Right now I can only do a closet tour because there's too much construction going on, but you guys can come on in. I'm a huge fan of crazy shades. I just love things that like scream creative. Like somebody who was making these was literally like an insane person. They were maybe like they were felt an emotion and they wanted to put that into a product or an accessory. I love it. When I take Noor to school, I like to Okay, so she seems like she's into creativity, which is important. That's good. I like to hear that. I don't know if they look super great or super interesting. They just look very bedazzled, but Okay. To wear like the craziest pair of shades and then I'll go in like this, like. Mm -hmm. I feel very serious when I do that. These are kind of cool. These are Alexander Vautier. I love Vautier, I'm a huge. Wait, she knows who Alexander Vautier is? And she can say his name right? She must not be a real YouTuber. I'm a huge Vautier fan. I love like retro looking shades. Like these are like the OG kind of shades. And then I also love these, which kind of like have like that retro print on them, which is like very now, but also kind of cool. These look so 90s to me. Like, do you guys remember Lil' Kim? Huh? <laughs> oh, these are really cool too. Chris bought me these and like surprised me. I love these, but they're so uncomfortable to wear. And one of the chains is like wonky, so I don't really wear it. But whenever I take a picture, I like hold it up and I do this. Wait, are those Chanel glasses real? I mean, like, I'm sorry, I'm not a Chanel head, Chanel head. Like, I haven't made my way through all of the 90s collections, so apologies. But I never realized that those glasses were actually Chanel. And I feel like from what I'm seeing so far, she's buying Vautier. I don't know if she really buys fake things. So, hmm. Okay. And also I guess it makes a lot of sense when I think about it now, for those of you that do not know, an iconic part of Chanel, which was brought about by Karl Lagerfeld, was the gold chain with the black leather running through it. So I guess actually when I think about those glasses, cause I had a knockoff pair of those glasses, it makes sense why they would be Chanel. <laughs> I had my nose done, so I can't wear shades that heavy. My nose, I'm pretty sure, will break. Do you guys remember these two? Like back in the day when Gucci first started, like doing their dope shit. This is so cool. I love these. I actually wore these so much. All the stones fell off of it. And then Gucci had to replace them for me. I love the reflection. You don't know if I'm smiling at you. You don't know if I'm staring at you. Can you see me? No, you don't know. Exactly. These are the H&M collection with Anna De La Russo. I actually like legit love. Wow, she's helping to make Anna De La Russo relevant. Okay, okay. Here's my thing so far. I, I'm actually kind of impressed. It seems like she has a good range of shit. Like she's not just like, uh, it's Gucci and Chanel. It's like, I like, I really, sorry. I'm really shook that she brought up Vautier like first before anybody else. I, I, okay, I, I'm really here for it. I love fashion. I don't think people know how much I love fashion. These are Anna Corinne Carlson. She loves fashion. Okay, okay. 
Mm -hmm. And I love her shades. I mean, you guys love these, right? This is like totally- Okay, see, these are the pair. I had a pair that looked like that. I didn't have like a pair that had a Chanel chain on it. I had like the knockoff little gold chain that was obviously fake. The 90s. These are like a little bit of an expensive pair, but this was really cheap. These are not expensive, they're like 70 bucks. Not bad. Okay, I'm getting a kick. I need to keep moving. I need to keep moving. All right, so I definitely love boots. I'm a boot person. Wait, is that a lie? I don't really wear boots, but I do love them. I love I like a boot. I love a boot. I think I prefer everybody in a boot. Collectively, as the human race, I think we should all be in a boot. Just one gigantic one. I mean, listen, the, the planet is being murdered, so I mean, we need somewhere to go. Maybe a boot is the proper place. Them and I collect them. How amazing are these? These are, are those? These are the. Wait, are those Saint Laurent? The, the Swarovski crystal Saint Laurent knee highs? Okay. Saint Laurent, these are really, really gorgeous. I also, I like a lot of like these limited edition shoes. This is a Jimmy Choo and Off-White color. Okay, like she's pulling out cute stuff. Like I like that Jimmy Choo Off-White collection. I'm pretty positive that it debuted alongside that whole Off-White collection that was based on Princess Diana. Like, uh, Huda Beauty is, I'm impressed. But she keeps pulling out shit and I'm like, holy. Toledo, the woman has taste. The woman has taste. She has the taste of buds. She got the buds of taste. If I ever write a book, it will be called The Buds of Taste. And it will be about some sort of person working in fashion. And it'll be really, really good. It'll be like a knockoff of The Grapes of Wrath. I really love these. These were amazing. I wore them once. Oh, I forgot about these. I don't know, I could try these on oh for you guys God. if you want. I don't know if I could get them up. I wore these this is the first time oh my god they're so hard wait she's never worn them that's my other issue about rich people is they buy so much shit and then they never actually wear it and that is an issue personally because my thing is if you buy it you should wear it i mean unless you're like buying something super duper crazy like recently i bought some like museum quality pieces and i never wear them because like a it never fit in them but i also know that like certain things are not meant to be worn but if i'm going to a store and i'm intending to buy things that you know are new and i, I like them i would prefer to wear them so i understand how they should be worn and sometimes I do think it's a bit wasteful when people buy things and then just never wear it because like they don't have the time or like blah, blah, blah. Like I get buying it, but I think it's also important that you do wear what you buy. Otherwise you're really, really buying unsustainably. It's like rich people's fast fashion. There's a reason why I never wore them. Gee, hey, how are we gonna get out? What is the method that you use? Do I, do I like hop up and then you pull them up? Ah! But cramp, I need a banana. How do we do this? Wait, so I sit down? Okay, we should have done this. I'm so sorry. This is a bad idea. Yeah. You know, I think we should just take them off. Yeah. Some things you don't wear. You just buy them for the artistic value of them. Also, Sailor Run made some bomb shades. Okay, all right. At least she understands that there's an artistic value to fashion. I appreciate that. Two like these. Okay, we're, we're done with shades, right? <laughs> we're done with shades. Did you say we're, were we done with shades? For bag. All right, we're getting into bag territory. And weirdly enough, I've yet to really see like a Birkin or like a basic bitch Chanel bag. I'm seeing a lot of limited edition kind of bags and like bags that remind me of certain Chanel runways. So like right now on the screen is that Latte Coco, which I believe is from that fall winter 2014 Chanel grocery store collection. I saw like a spaceship bag, which I believe is from the spaceship collection. I'm excited, like I'm excited. Like I truly, like right now, I don't know anything about this woman, but I really feel like she likes fashion and she wasn't kidding when she said it. Like a lot of these beauty influencers are billionaires, millionaires who have these closets. They're like, I love fashion. It's so great. It's so fun. Oh my God. No, you just like having money and spending it. To me, this is giving me like, I actually appreciate fashion. I appreciate the art form. I appreciate the sort of nuances, context, references, inspirations of fashion and designers. And that I like, that I like to see from my beauty influencer entrepreneurs. Now, right now, what I'm obsessed with is like little tiny ornate weird bags that you can't really fit a lot of things in. I'm a big 
collector of like Chanel vintage bags when I couldn't afford them when they all came out. And so I just started buying all of them that were available. So like a lot of weird ones, like we all, we all remember this one, which is so beautiful. Oh yeah, the Chanel number no. five bottle bag very chic okay interested loving here for it so i have it in the clear and the black but i also love like these little jewel cases as well i love this one it has like crystals all over it actually my sister got me this for my birthday last year oh my god she has a lot of these bags I also love like this one right here. This is like all crystal. I just love these little like little trinkets. Like you clearly can't fit anything in there except for like a chapstick and maybe a credit card. My husband actually has a purse that he carries with him. So most of the time I just put like a lip liner in here and then my husband carries my stuff in his purse. So and a husband to carry all your shit and a husband in general. That to me is luxury. And thank God that he has a purse. I do love like limited edition, like limited edition things like get me really excited. I feel like the sales people in all these stores know as soon as they say limited edition, I'm gonna buy it. All these little lunchbox bags, like I am obsessed with them, especially the really tiny ones. Like I love them. So this is definitely not all my bags. Maybe I'm- That's not all the bags? Jesus. And I mean, even in, like I'm looking here, I see like Gucci, I see the Dior lady bag. I feel like I see a Saint Laurent logo in there, another Chanel bag. Like there's a lot there and it's not you know a shitty Birkin or a Kelly bag or you know a Chanel boy bag like it seems like it's interesting purchases which I love to see problem for sure um, I get a little moody and sometimes when I'm moody going to the store can make you feel a little bit better it doesn't matter what store it is I'm not saying you should do that like I'm not condoning it but this is like what's happened to me some of these pieces are like really, really special. Like this one actually, I was one of the first people in the world to be able to get this bag way before Louis Vuitton even posted on social media. So they like, they sold it to me, but like, you can't post it. Wait, is she like a real client like that? Like, does she go to Chanel's shows? Cause that's, I, I talked about this years ago when Jeffree Star did his initial closet tour. I'm just very interested because it seems like she spends money. Like she like drops money, she's a client and certain people buy Chanel. Certain people are clients of Chanel. Like there's a difference between the two. And I mean, it's the same thing with Louis Vuitton. It's the same thing with Gucci. It's the same thing with Prada. You know, they do have sort of VIP guests that drop a lot of money and are very loyal to the brands. And you know, they'll treat them very special because they spend a lot of money. That's what you do in the service industry. A, that Louis Vuitton bag, I hate those LV bags. I think they're so ugly. Like Nicole Gisquet, one of the worst bags that he ever produced. But the fact that they're selling to her early before they're posting about them on social media, she must be a gigantic client and they must really enjoy her and the money she spends. I definitely love a little flavor in my bags and vintage bags. Like I think are just like so dope. Yeah, this is a cool briefcase that you know you wear when okay, you- Okay, love a Chanel quilted briefcase. Very hot businesswoman aesthetic vibes that I would like to be go to the office. I have so many PVC bags. PVC is like my jam. The only thing is like, you can't really put too many private things in them, but I always carry PVC. I'm a bit meh on the PVC bags. I think they're a little bit trendy. And I mean, listen, I guess if you have this amount of money, spending money on trendy things is sort of, you know, blah, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But I think oh, they're a bit yeah, of like the 2010s. And now that we're in the roaring 20s part two, the remix, I don't want to see your PVC bags, people. I don't want to see, I don't want to see inside. Like, I don't want to see your pens and your papers and your dentures and your animal hairs and all of that junk. I don't want to see it. Keep it to yourself. This bag right here is actually from the 90s, which I like. Okay, wait, so she's like buying 90 Chanel bags. She's a stan of Carl, even if she doesn't know it. Maybe she doesn't know it. Maybe she has no idea who Carl Lagerfeld is, but She's a stan, regardless. Love, I bought this online. I thought it was like so cute. I got the blue one as well, which looks like it's been through a lot right now. It kind of has. I definitely love like these little Louis Vuitton bags as well. Like they, they actually created some of the weirdest shapes. Like I just love this. Wait, I'm sorry, like, so not only does she buy all these great Chanel bags, now she's buying good Louis Vuitton bags. Like she's buying this cube bag by Nicolas Gasquet. And Nicolas Gasquet, if you do not know, his job at Louis Vuitton, the clothing, eh, but he's very good when it comes to accessories. He's really sort of innovated accessories. There's a lot that he's done and he's very good at it and he pushes the envelope. And I always think when I look at these shows, who the f 
fuck is buying this shit? Like there is no way that people are actually buying it because in reality, rich people usually have zero taste. It's, it's, it's just sort of the truth sometimes. But I think Huda Katan is sort of proving me wrong that the girls do have taste. Uh, I am truly amazed at this collection. And like, we haven't even gotten into clothes yet. Like I see Chanel jackets, I see little logos, you know, I see some interesting shit in the shoes. We haven't even really got to shoes. So I'm very amused and happy and glad and want to see more. And this was like actually really good to carry, but it's like one of those bags you put here. So you have to do like the dead fish all the time. You're like, hey. So that kind of sucks, but like, you know, you get used to it. Look how cute that is. I feel like Cher from like Clueless. I do like that bag as well. Now I'm gonna take you guys on to shoes because shoes! What girl does not love? There's a lot going on there, but I'm excited. They have to be really beautiful, but really fashionable, but they have to be comfortable. It's like a dilemma. It's like, do you want something really fashionable, really amazing, or do you want to be comfortable? I am obsessed with, I think I told you guys before, Alexander Vautier. You the thing is, if you guys do not know Alexander Vautier, it's very much so of that sort of like street wear, but make it haute couture sort of aesthetic. It's a little bit trashy, like French denim and like sequins and crystals, but I guess he has clients. You are amazing. I haven't worn these before, so I can kind of air kiss them. That's fine. Ooh, these are really dope. He's like, oh, I'll take them back. Those are not really dope. That looks like a melting ice cream cone. I love these. Again, I haven't worn these either. Kind of annoying. I want to start wearing shoes. See, comfort is the thing for me. So a lot of times I'm wearing shoes like this. Listen, I don't disrespect a slipper, but your slipper should be chic. My Rick Owens calf hair Birkenstocks very chic. <laughs> and I'm not very flexible. These are really dope. These are the Yeezys, the reflective ones. I don't know if you guys can tell if they're reflective or not. Okay, cute, Huda. The classic pair of Chanel's because these are like, for me, like coming in, it's a classic chicness. These are like really fucking beautiful. This brand is amazing. Rene Calvilla. Okay, don't know that at all. And those scare me. I don't like those whatsoever. You make beautiful shoes, to be honest. You know what I like about her? You know what I like about you, Renee? You put glitter on the bottom. That's a really nice thought. That shows how much detail you do. Renee, you're amazing. Renee's actually a man, though. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, you're amazing. Me, like every time we talk about a designer, I'm like, oh, gender? Didn't think about it. I, I talked to a Renee once that was a man. I, I love names like that, like Ashley. And, anyways. <laughs> Also, these are like those crystals that are like the AB crystals. Oh my God, he's mixed it up with regular crystals. Oh my God, that's why they blink so much. You can see he like has like bronze crystals and he's mixed it with AB crystals that have been like brushed. Like brilliant, I love stuff. Okay, I really like that she like is looking at the clothing and is like understanding things about it. And I mean, maybe that sounds like a dumb sentence, but like I think a lot of people that buy clothes don't really understand about clothes and it scares them and hence they don't buy interesting clothes. They buy things that everybody else has in order to be cool. But to me, it's like she's dissecting the clothing saying like, it's not this crystal, it's actually this crystal. And I'm like, I wouldn't know shit about crystals. So tell me Huda. She's such a cuta. One of my favorite shoes, these Giovanni Tarassi, I've worn these quite a bit. I love this little point. I just think it's like such a dope shoe. And I know Rihanna just recently, I think she was inspired by as well. It's in her collection as well. This is like so dope. Saint Laurent also did it as well. So a few designers have been doing this. I don't know who did it first. I have no idea. It's I'm sorry. Did who Catan just die at Prada the shit out of Rihanna and Saint Laurent? Did she just say, uh, Rihanna and Saint Laurent just copied Giovanni Tarassi? Like, I love this woman. I love this woman. I like her. I like her and I don't like a lot of people. I really don't like a lot of people. I like her. She is smart. She is on it. She knows her trends. She knows her designer. She knows her textiles. I'm, I'm here. I'm a Huda booty stand. I don't even buy beauty products. I'm going to go to Sephora and buy some Huda Beauty because I want her to continue this journey of fashion.
I, I like what's happening here. The sexiness and I love that. Look how dope these shoes are. I need to wear these. I need to like just deal with the discomfort of wearing heels. I am kind of into like crystallized shoes right now. You can see these I just recently got from Giambi Rossi as well. Like where are we going? I want to know. We're going to a disco party or we're going to McDonald's. I don't know. Either place. They're really, really dope. I also like. Yes, yes, okay, okay, sold. My two favorite things, Disco and McDonald's. Of these like knife shoes, I think that's what they're called. I have a matching skirt. These are so cool. These are like really, really amazing. So she has the Balenciaga knife shoes. She name dropped the Balenciaga knife shoes. And then she said she has a matching Balenciaga skirt. Like I have to stand. I love them. Balenciaga, I think they make really dope shoes. Sometimes the knife shoes though can make your feet look really big. I don't love the way they make your feet look, but they're also really cute though. So. And you know what's even more interesting? Like, yes, I get on here and I chat shit about every designer and their mother because I have more of like a historical understanding of the brands, but I think it's so much more interesting, maybe not so much more interesting. I think it's also interesting because I don't want to sell myself short here, I think it's interesting to hear a client actually discuss clothing and discuss what they actually think of the clothing that they're purchasing. Cause you know, sometimes you buy a luxury item and everybody expects it. Oh, it's so perfect. It's so wonderful. It's luxury. It's not always the case. Sometimes, you know, product is not up to snuff. Personally, I bought a Balenciaga coat recently, lost the belt, not really of my own accord because the way that the belt loops were, they were really shitty. And I lost the belt and Balenciaga was like, sorry, can't do anything about it. So I think it's actually really interesting to hear stories from customers and actual clients about, you know, how a shoe fits or how it makes your foot look. Like, I think that's really, really, truly interesting. And I think it's really great because it's not coming from a fashion source. I think a lot of fashion sources just say, these are so chic, these are so cool, blah, 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 blah. But they don't really have the experience of wearing them, trying to, you know, combine them with other outfits and different styles. But when you're getting it from an actual client who has the money to buy it, so they don't really care because they can say whatever they want because they're gonna buy it. They're not waiting to get gifts like a fashion editor or a fashion blogger or an influencer, you know, that's really cool and interesting and different. And I, there's not much in this video that I'm disliking so far. We have more bags. Look how cute these bags are. And then this is like, look at Oh, that. okay, sorry. Wait, that Louis Vuitton bag. I'm pretty positive that this bag is a Takashi Murakami bag, which if you guys don't know, was actually a collaboration that was done whilst Marc Jacobs was the creative director of Louis Vuitton Women's. And Marc was really, really smart in terms of sort of branding Louis Vuitton, not just as these sort of brown and orangey beige, you know, monograms, but he really brought in multiple artists like Steven Sebring and Takashi Murakami, Yayoi Kusama, to sort of help uh, give the brand new life. So it's really interesting to see that. I believe that's a Takashi Murakami bag you know, sort of being purchased by Huda. I don't know if she like knows that that's what that is, but very interesting. I actually bought this and when I bought it, Neon wasn't in, it was like a few years before. And I was like, that bag is so hideous. It's like way too bright. It's like, why did they mix patent leather with neon? But now it's dope. So sometimes you just gotta like trust your instincts and you know, figure that it might come in. Also this, oh, this vanity case from Chanel. This is like the details. Like I love the little details. I'm all about the details. This is a Caro bag, I presume. The details. I really love it because I like the heart mirror. It's shit like this that makes me so. Wait, that's really cute. I like the heart mirror. And that's, you know what, as much as I railed on Carl in the last, you know, few years of his time at Chanel, I didn't really get a chance to experience the Chanel of the 90s or the early 2000s or even the 80s. So, you know, there is a lot of history there that I think Carl is really, really brilliant for. And a lot of what he made or what he helped produce and designed really had this cheeky sort of fun notion. And I think that's why so many people love Carl's. He took it seriously, but also I think there were these little like winks and nods and sort of, you know, jokes as well in what he did. Makes me so happy. I also love these bags from the Louis Vuitton collection. I think Louis Vuitton does the best collaboration. You can see here, I have a lot of iridescence. A lot oh, we're getting into clothing. Okay, I'm excited. A lot of different types of materials. I'm a real big fan of like weird stuff. Like I love things that again, feel artistic, feel creative, feel fun. Oh my God, you guys, hopefully you guys remember this piece. This is from Gucci two, three years ago. This Rihanna wore it with like the face mask to Coachella. It was kind of like a moment. I think now those kinds of pieces definitely are more on their way out but just regardless, she still has it. 
This piece like never went out of style. It's really stretchy yeah. as well. So it's like just one of the most amazing pieces. Okay, I would have never known that it was stretchy because I've never really touched one, but the more you know. That you could like invest in. And I love pieces like that. I love pieces like that stay. Cause again, it's not just about a trend. It's about like somebody's creative vision. Alexander Vautier as well. Like again, love his stuff. He's like rhinestone tops. Like I'm all about that. Love them and they're really comfortable too, which is amazing. I also love like suit jackets. Like I'm obsessed with wearing suits. A suit jacket with a mini skirt. That is like my thing. That's what I wear when I want to be like a boss and I want to be like serious. So I have it in like all kinds of prints as well and materials. You can see this. And this is how she hate one. Is that Balmain? The Balmain iridescent jacket. It's me to wear it. Oh, this is also, you can see this material as well. Oh, God. She really likes that reflective, glittery, sort of like 3M style. You know what would be really cool on her? Actually, Marie and Sarah. 3M material, which if you guys don't know, 3M is like a reflective material. Huda Booty in this 3M Marie and Sarah mask in the midst of the coronavirus is the content that I desire and need in the midst and age of Corona. This is Paco Rabanne and legit, these are shorts, but- Shut up. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I love this lady, I love her. She's, she buys Paco Rabanne chain mail shorts. Like, wow, I've never liked somebody this much in my entire life. Can I be honest? Like A, Huda Beauty, if you ever watch this, please invite Halton to come to your closet. I would pay money, I'd pay an entrance fee. $50, 100. I'd pay the entrance fee to come see it, but I want to like dig in that closet. I want to see all of this happening. But I've been looking for this material for like a while. This is a really dope. I actually have the skirt for this too. So cool, so bossy. Love this, this is so amazing. This is like kind of like, again. All right, listen, we're all a slut for a Chanel tweed jacket. Listen, like the one thing in life that I would love to have an haute couture version of is like a fitted Chanel jacket and pant. The skirt, a little bit too much for me on a daily, but like the jacket and the pant, oh my gosh. Boss bitch, but I'm kind of nice. This is like the nice CEO. So this is like the fashionable CEO. And this is... She's buying Chanel jackets with matching bags. Like she's on a different level. Boss bitch, I'm here to make some million dollar deals. CEO. You got different vibes for different days, you know what I mean? This area here has some really beautiful dresses, like some very important dresses to me as well. Like this Oscar de la Renta that we wore for um, the Global Gift Gala. Everybody really loved this. Eh, a bit boring, just saying. When I wore it, it was really, really beautiful. This Marquesa, which was beautiful, we wore. Oh, I don't like, why is the gown section upsetting me? Marquesa, who wears Marquesa? Canceled, Marquesa's canceled, as well as Harvey Weinstein. Wore for our rose gold photo shoot, which Henman was a photographer then, it was really beautiful. And then I have this other Marquesa, which was like my first designer dress that I ever bought. Oh. The problem is once you open this room, you might get like sucked into it. It's like a vortex. This Marquesa, which is like one of my favorite dresses. So beautiful, so elegant. There's like so many dresses in here. Like it's crazy. We're gonna try to close this up. Ugh. Not everyone can close it. Okay, moving on. Okay, we're getting into like the Judith Lieber bags. These bags here have a little bit of flavor to them. A lot of these are Judith Lieber bags and I feel her bags are so cute. This one is like, it has two sides to them. I feel like that's me. This okay, so Judith Lieber, I'm not the biggest fan of personally, but I think over time, I think I've come to realize that A, these bags, when they were first sort of done, very different, very out there. There are all these bags with all these little crystals on them in different sort of fun, humorous little styles. So, you know, you have a robot or a lipstick and all of that kind of vibe. So they're not super functional, I don't think. And I also don't think all of them are super duper cute, but I think they're very sentimental to people. It's sort of like buying a Fabergé egg, but as a bag, that's the way I think I can describe it. But some people really, really love them. I know Kris Jenner is a really, really big fan as well. I do know that Tommy Hilfiger's wife, Dee, is actually like the creative director of Judith Lieber or she manages the brand. And she took over, you know, a few years ago. Me at home, this is me in the office. This one here is a really special Matryoshka Chris got me. She's 
really cute. She, this is actually a very limited, very special bag. Gina Libra makes some like bomb, really cute, really artistic. I feel like these are like jewels. See what I mean? It's very like funny. It's like money bags or, you know, lipsticks. I don't even know. Like uh, it's just funny kind of humorous little stuff all with crystals. They're not just bags. Honestly, personally, I would never carry these. This is really cool. I got at the Louis Vuitton fashion show. I went to it last year in the spring and then I saw this and I like loved it on the runway, so I got it. This is like really dope Chanel <gasps> bag. Oh, that's the Chanel ball bag, I believe from the collection. It was probably Carl's second to last ready to wear collection where it was at the beach and they had the moving water in the Grand Palais, which is like kind of crazy. I bet it just recently came out. I think like last season. It's just so cool. Ashley Longshore maybe these are really cute, like little Judith Lieber lipstick. She did a collaboration with them. Oh, I do have some fragrances as well. A lot of these are very niche. I'm a big niche fragrance person, so I love Byredo. I found these in the plaza in New York, which is just like a really cute fragrance. I Getting into sneakers, because the girls love a streetwear experience. I do like sneakers. I will tell you the Chanel sneakers that I love so much. Most of them are too narrow for me. So sometimes I find them a little uncomfortable, but I still love them. They're so cute. I love a lot of color. Like I'm really into like bright, like really outrageous kind of sneakers. I bought these Stella McCartney ones for myself, but I actually meant to get them for Nora. And I love that they're iridescent. Ugh. And they're really fun, they're really cool. Nora and I actually always buy the same collection of sneakers. So like these really cute ones that Chanel came out with the pastel ones. Chris actually surprised us and he bought them for me and for Nora, which was really, really, really sweet. Me you know what I would love for her? I would love if she had those Chanel tweed sneakers. That would be very chic, I'd be into that. Me and Nora and Chris all have these. Like we all match and so we like to wear these to the airport. These are really comfortable. So we have more sneakers, um, but we couldn't put them all out here. Right now I'm in the process of moving houses and it's almost, we're almost done. We've been designing the last house for two years and building it and we're finally gonna be moving in, hopefully at the end of this year. Oh my God, that's so many Louis Vuitton bags. I don't even know what to do with that. I have like really cool hat boxes. I'm a huge fan. They're very chic. You feel very fabulous, very timeless, very like, you know, like retro as well. And of course, like you need like dope hats for the hat box. So I definitely have an insane collection of hats. I have like a lot of like sometimes like fun ones like this. Like this for me is like so cool. It's like so 90s, so cool. I do a lot of these. I don't know why I do so many of these. This is like my favorite kind of hat. I also have some of these berets as well. Like I love these berets. You could do this and be like French, be cute. They're just cool. I feel like hats like, you know, Okay, normally I'm not a hat person, but like, she's kind of selling me on them. They kind of like give you a vibe. I love this one as well. Like netting was like so dope last year. We did it on our nude palette. It's very chic. I love these like boss mafioso kind of hats too. Like I love these. I feel like I'm gonna go solve crime or something. Okay, I, was, yeah, I take that back. Let's not do that kind of hat. I love these hats. Hats are so good. This one I just recently got, it's so cool. This is from Eugenia Kim, which is like a really cool beach hat. This one is really cool. This is a recent, I think this is Chanel. This is really cool as well too. Really dope. Okay, so she did buy a lot from that Chanel beach collection. Okay. Really dope. They give you a vibe. They like totally complete a look and I love that. I'm not sure about this one. Like when am I actually gonna tie this like this and do this one? Yeah, I'm gonna do this. Oh! Is that Jacques Mousse? Kind of cute. Maybe I can pick flowers and be like, and have like a basket and then have them here. So now I look like little Bo Peep. Has lost her sheep. TBH is giving me very like Marie Antoinette, you know, going and dressing up like a French peasant before the uh, French Revolution kind of vibes. So yeah, okay. <gasps> is that a Prada fringe plastic dress? Do I like have to like stand this woman harder than I already am? We've saved the best for last. So these are some really dope pieces. Like this, for instance, is a Nicholas Gibran dress that we wore for Resting Boss Face. He made it for me. He's an amazing designer. He's so beautiful. He's so wonderful. This is a runway pit piece from Christian Dior. It's just a little short for my taste. Meh, meh. Keep the Maria Grazia far away from me, Huda. But I will get eventually to wearing it at some appropriate place. This is a really cool piece too. This is um, this is from Gucci. And I talked Jihei to let me into wearing this for a Selfridges PA, which she was like, you look like you're going skiing. Meh. And then I was like, no, I want to be loud. And then I was loud and then all the comments were like, you look like you're going skiing. Always trust your stylist. Right, Jihei? 
<laughs> but it is really dope. And I know Lena Del Rey just recently wore it in the newest Gucci ad. It was so dope. This is a really dope piece from Balmain. And I don't usually love one shoulders, but because I love symmetry, this actually was really, really. Wow. Okay. 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 So she loves symmetry. It's like we're the same person. And I'm really liking this and I'm really into this. And I need to become her friend. Like, how do I become Huda Booty's friend? How? How? pretty and it fit really nicely as well. This is such a dope piece from Chanel. It's just like this weird blouse and it's full of iridescence. Oh my God, this is a really beautiful Naeem Khan dress. I love Naeem Khan. I love Balmain. Balmain fits curvy women. So if you're a curvy woman and you do a lot of stretch, Balmain is like that brand that, you know, just a lot of curvy women like. This is... Okay, see, like, I really like that she's actually, like, giving advice. And I mean, she's not wrong about Balmain. I think ever since Olivier Rousseau became friends with Kim Kardashian, he, I think he realized that curvy women actually are a market that you should be targeting and he's kind of into it so amazing it's so beautiful it's so gorgeous like the detail this woman is buying the Balmain like demi couture demi couture if you do not know is pretty much couture but it's really not because technically like to be couture you have to have a certain amount of seamstresses every dress that you make and somebody buys has to have a certain amount of fittings for the dress so there are sort of ways that couture goes about being called couture but Balmain and the way that Olivier Rousson does some of his dresses, especially ones that are heavily beaded like this, is very much so called demi couture because it's everything but couture in name. It's like the detail too and the shape and everything is so nice. Oh my God, these are both so heavy. Uh, this is a the Prada. Runway piece from Prada that like literally I'm so obsessed with. Oh, we actually did wear this. I wore it to do a PA in Germany. It was really amazing. We had like 10,000 people show up and I actually couldn't go outside. So it was kind of a bummer. So really I love this woman. I love this woman. Amazing dress. I love this so much. It's just such a piece of art. Again, like it was right when neon was just about to take off. Look at the shape. Look at the silhouette. Look at the plexi. Look at the tone. This is of course the back of it. So let me turn around so you guys can see the front. Looks the same. Wow. But it's so beautiful. Wow, I, I stan, I stan Huda Beauty. I stan Huda Beauty. Hey, look at that sound. It's so heavy, so I'm, I'm gonna put it back up. She just called Prada a piece of art, and like now I need to know if she's gonna be invited to like the Ralph Simmons Meet Your Product collection, cause like I feel like she would love it. And if she does, I want to also go and then sit next to her so I can watch her the whole time. This Gucci piece is also really amazing. I know Jennifer Lopez wore it. Um, I saw her wearing it. I didn't see her in person, but I saw a photo of her wearing it. It was so heavy though, it's not really a piece that you travel with. The pants I wore, and it looked, they look amazing on. But, but the top is not as flattering, unfortunately. This is a really dope piece that my girl made, Hanouf. Shout out to Hanouf. She made it for the Fashion Bowl um, years ago, actually, but I still feel like it's so dope. She, she has matching jeans as well. And when you turn, it has like this fray. This is also a really amazing custom-made dress. It's a Kuwaiti brand called Le Bourgeoisie. It's hard to say. Le Bourgeoisie. I'm not French. It's very hard to say. Slice it here. You wanna go? You wanna finish? Okay guys, so I have to hang out with Noor. We're gonna go get dressed up. So I'm sorry guys, you gotta go. You guys have to go. So this is actually my other closet, which is kind of a mess and Jihei is gonna kill me. This is where everything else doesn't fit. Actually, this isn't even everything else, but you can see there's a lot of outfits here. There's- I want to be this woman. I wanna be a part of her lifestyle. A lot of stuff in here. This is kind of like the way things right now are organized until I move kind of crazy in my job and what I do I have to change my outfits all the time so you know like sometimes I can wear this and then I can use it in a campaign and then I need to figure out exactly where else I'm gonna do it it's kind of crazy but it is somehow organized and can I see her in one of those Bellman leather molded pieces because that would be hot that is the end of this Huda Beauty closet tour and like I didn't really think this was gonna be good I thought I was gonna be like dragging her the whole time and here I am like standing Huda Beauty so yeah a moment please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and send me some of your favorite closet tours that you want me to react to in the future I would love to do that I'm putting them all in a list compiling them you know I'm gonna have a lot of time now that I'm self quarantining so let me know but thank you guys so much for watching I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL